So you were Tracy's coach for three years. That's right. And you were starting to tell us during the break, but didn't get to it. So America's going to now get to hear it too. The one time what, Trace? Yeah, the one time like, he coached me for three years, and it was only one time that he was extremely just angry at me. Like ready to like rip his face yeah. off. So we're up three at home against Sacramento. Uh, they take a timeout. There's like about three seconds left. We have practiced all year. Like we're always going to take the foul. So Weber catches it with right. his back to the basket. McGrady's gone him. He doesn't foul him. <laughs> then Bibby comes off. He goes like we're switching. We're a non-switch team. So he jumps to a guy who doesn't have the ball. Weber turns, hits a three, ties it up, and we lose in overtime. And the next day we fly to Miami. We're going to play in Miami. And I told him before our meeting, just take it. I can barely <laughs> even look at you right, right. now. Just, just take it in there. Oh, so. man. He, yeah, he let me have it in front of everybody. And then there were many curse words. And well, not really, because that's not my style, as, as Mac would no, know. Like, never, I'm, I'm never. playing it straight down. <laughs> yeah. A very even keel, <laughs> Rachel. Face. Yeah. Very even keel. Yeah. <laughs> They're even. They're just all words we can't say <laughs> yeah, on TV. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you're still upset now. We started no, talking no. about it during the break. He and brought like, it up, and it got me fired up once again. Right, exactly. So apparently. You know how bad it is, Rachel, is when I had to talk the other assistants from not killing him. Tom Thibodeau, <laughs> Steve Clifford, Andy Greer. There you go. See, I got him riled up for the show. That's yeah. good. I like that. <laughs> High energy. Look, you guys heard Steph Curry just now talking about, hey, he still feels good. Right? He feels okay. What do you think is the biggest thing the Warriors need to adjust to be okay in game two? Well, I think they're limited offensively with the weapons that they have right now and because of their health. So I think what they have to do is they've got a guard. You can't give up 118 points. You're going to have to lock in defensively and then also take care of the ball. If you defend a little bit better, handle the ball a little bit better, you should be able to keep them in that 100 to 105 range, which mm -hmm. makes it a winnable game if you get a great game from Curry and Thompson. Is there an adjustment you'd make? Absolutely. Um, again, I, I stated this earlier in the show yeah. that Alfonso McKinney has to get more minutes. You, that's that's true. If uh, Iguodala is going to be, you know, limping around. Um, <laughs> he, no, I mean, nice straight teeth. Oh, he's, he's laboring his leg. Yeah. That's just what it is. You know, you get you need a third guy to help Clay and Steph relieve some of the pressure off them. He has been that guy defensively and offensively. You go back to the Houston series, the, the threes that he was hitting. Mm -hmm. You need McKinney to come in because I think he can knock down those shots and he could give you extra possessions on the offensive end, which he showed in the Western Conference Finals. Well, that's what I think. I love his offensive rebounding. And yesterday they hurt uh, mm -hmm. Toronto with second shots yes. that led to threes. So a big factor in the game. And I think Cousins, uh, if Iguodala is severely limited, I think Cousins has to be able to give them quality minutes 18 to 24 uh, because I think they're going to need the punch. And I thought his pick and roll defense mm -hmm. was better than people want to give it credit for. They always want to nitpick his defense. I thought he did some good things. It's tough, though, with Boogie. We're going to talk about a little bit later in the show just how, how and when to use him and how much he can be used and all of that stuff. Brutal, brutally hard decision for Steve Kerr. Right. To try to integrate him back in in the midst of a finals. I mean, that is a tough, tough coaching decision. I want to get to the other side of the ball, too, though, because, look, welcome to the NBA Finals. Pascal Siakam, right, stole the show, 32 points, shooting 82% from the field. What do you think, though? Can he continue that? Is this a blip or a trend? Is this something this kid can lay out? He's 25 years old. The above the break threes, mm -hmm. I don't think will continue, continue on. But if he gets layups in transition, he's going to keep making those. Right. And he went at Draymond Green a couple times as Green tried to influence him left. And he finished with his left, and he, he took that challenge on. So I think they've got to do a better job individually. But most importantly, they got to take away his transition mm -hmm. layups. You can't give guys right. who, who need confidence to bolster their jump shot confidence layups. And, and that's what I saw last night. I was watching the game. Before he scored a point, mm -hmm. he was kind of hesitant about taking an outside shot. Once he got that easy basket, yep. it's like the, the weight of the world lifted off this kid's shoulders. And you got to create some doubt. You know, you got to create some doubt. You got to apply pressure on him. Have him start out 0 for 5, right. right? So he don't feel comfortable taking those outside shots because he was real comfortable last night. And that is, of course, what we heard Steve Kerr yelling at his team and, and that transition defense. Come on, guys, that sort of thing. I, I mean, look, I will say Draymond seems to have a problem when longer guys like that go at him. He's so crafty, though. What adjustment do you think Draymond's going to make to Pascal? 
Well, I think it's going to be twofold. They got up and they really pressured Draymond Green when he had the ball. Mm -hmm. And a couple times he took them off the dribble. I think he's got to be not just a ball mover, but if they're going to pressure the ball hard, he's got to go by them and create plays for himself or others. And then defensively, I wouldn't get on Siakam's side and try to influence him left or right. Green Straight is up. such a good defender. Right. Stay square Straight in up. front of him, move yep. your feet, and make him finish over the top. You know what I didn't Instincts see? You know so what I didn't great. see from, uh, from Golden State? You know the, the, the play that they always get where they come off a pick and roll, Draymond is in the middle of defense, and the, the, the pressure is on the back of that defense, and they throw it a lot. I don't think they got that one time last night, did they? And I think that comes back to their ability with Toronto because they're so big. They switched that pick and roll in green instead of putting two on Curry. Mm -hmm pocket pass yeah. four on three now they they made them because of their versatility the ability to switch take that away and then make one Curry on one. go one on one I mean that's it's funny Steve Kerr keeps saying the team I would most compare the Raptors to is us we've been so busy looking at Houston as the team built to beat Golden State the truth is that Masai Ujiri built this team a lot like Golden State in being long switchable bodies that can go around everything and play defense that way 